when God created the world, there was nothing. And then he spoke the word, let there be light. And then the word was made flesh. And so today, if you feel that your life is stuck in the past, if you feel that you're there trapped in the old, I want you to start understanding that God is birthing something new in your life. And that is what Feast Conference 2020 is all about. God's going to speak to you and He will do something new in your life. I want you to be there. I want you to bring your friends. I want you to bring your family. And I want you to bring, yes, a faith that says God's going to do something new. Feast Conference 2020 in the beginning. I am desperate for anything to ease the burden, for something new, to give me anything that's certain, longing for a change, looking for a scheme, searching for a reason, not to stay the same. But in your hands I remain. I choose to heed your call. I leave it up to you. You who see my rise and fall. So cleanse me, disturb me, shake me to my core. Make me. FOD for the Soul, a bite-sized reflection by the Feast Ortigas District Builders, happening every Monday to Saturday at 10 in the morning. Friends, every 7, 10 in the morning, we have Break Feast, every Monday to Saturday, as we lead you to a short examine for a strong jumpstart to win your day. As we cap off our night, we present to you Late Night Snack, Monday to Saturday, every 10 in the evening as we lead you to another examine to end the day. Friends, Worship Night every Wednesday and Friday at 7.30 in the evening as we go deep for another praise and worship experience. As we come to you as one Feast Ortigas District family, we invite you to our Feast at Home. This is a collaboration of the builders all throughout the district. Schedules are available on your screen. See you there! As the situation pushes us to stay online, we present to you brand new online offerings. You may visit the following pages flashed on your screen. You can also watch us on YouTube at the World Wide Web. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell button for you to be updated on our future contents. To find out more, visit us at www.feastortigasdistrict.com. All of these are possible with the Lord. Through our dear brothers and sisters, thank you so much for blessing us with your love and support. Let us continue the cycle of generosity by giving your donations tights and love offerings through Paymaya or by visiting our website at feastortigasdistrict.com slash give. Thank you so much for your support. Happy Sunday, brothers and sisters. It's a new week ahead, a fresh start. Isn't it exciting and it's so hopeful for us to start again? And like Jesus' love, there's always fresh mercies every morning. And it's the same love every day. Isn't it exciting to start again and take off from the past wrongs that we've done? And so today, I invite you to come and worship with us and take off and start a new journey with Jesus. Come on! I've searched in different places 
Great day, brothers and sisters. 
<laughs> Welcome to the Fees Ortigas District Fees at Home. I'm Brother Anthony Rodriguez, Fees Builder of the Fees Ortigas Sunday 430 Fees. Kamusta ang linggo niyo? How was your week? Oh, normally, all of us are excited for, for Sunday because we're starting a new week again. A new week of hope, a new week of blessings, of of God's providence in our lives. So, brothers and sisters, as we start our week right here at the feast, I'd like to invite you to pray our favorite prayer. Are you excited? And if you are, then let's start. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today, I receive all of God's love for me. Today, I open myself to the unbounded, limitless, overflowing abundance of God's universe. Today, I open myself to God's blessings, healing, and miracles. Today, I open myself to God's word so that I become more like Jesus every day. Today, I proclaim that I am God's beloved. I am God's servant. I am God's powerful champion. And because I am blessed, I'm blessing the world in Jesus' name. Amen. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Amen. Welcome again, brothers and sisters. Welcome to our new, to, uh, not new, but to our series, Miracles and more. And we are now in, ito yung new, we are now in talk six, make me new. Can you say that with me? Make me new. Yeah, Brothers and sisters, alam nyo, we've been journeying uh, in, with the, uh, in the book of Matthew for a long time already. Kung mapapansin nyo, every week has been mind-blowing for all of us hearing the talks and how rich the gospel of Matthew is. We started with Matthew chapter one, I think, Last December 2019, even before the pandemic, pa lang, ano, we started Matthew already. And today, I think 10 months later, we're in Matthew chapter 9. So that means we have 19 more chapters to go. So relax lang kayo. Marami pa. We have 19 more chapters to go. And, and it's exciting because that's how deep and delightful God's Word is. Isang book pa lang tong inaaral natin, the book of Matthew pa lang. And brothers and sisters, if you've been journeying with us in, in this, in our topic, in, in our journey to the book of Matthew, you will see how brilliant of a writer Matthew is. Ang galing niya magsulat eh. Because every part is engineered to say what he wanted to say. Parang talagang inayos niya, tinahin niya lahat na ito yung gusto sabihin eh. So nasabi niya, after the Sermon on the Mount, he shared nine miracle stories. Yes, nine. <laughs> nine miracle stories. We've taken up the first six already. So yung unang anime, tatlo pa. The, the, one, the topics that we took was uh, healing of the leper. That was the first one. The second one was the healing of the centurion servant. The third one is the healing of Peter's mother-in-law. The fourth one is the calming of the storm. The fifth one is the healing healing of the two demon-possessed guys. And the sixth one is the healing of the paralyzed man. Pero brothers and sisters, if you if you've listened to all our talks, so papansin nyo, in between these miracle stories, Matthew inserts two follow me stories. What does that mean? May mga stories about people who Jesus, I was asking to follow him, that Jesus invited to follow him. And you know why? Because the purpose of the miracles is to follow the miracle worker. Yeah, I repeat that. I'll, just, I'll repeat it again. The purpose of the miracles is to follow the miracle worker. Hindi naman ginawa ni Jesus yun para sumikat lang siya. He did those miracles uh for the people to follow the one doing the miracles. We already read the first miracle story about the two guys who wanted to follow Jesus, but under their own conditions, but they wanted to bury the dead and do something. Hindi sila ready. And oftentimes, if we look at ourselves, isn't this our story too? Di ba, minsan tayo din ganun, Lord, I want to follow you. Pero pwede bang, wag muna ngayon, pwede bang pag medyo okay-okay na ako? Lord, pwede bang I'll follow you pag marami na akong pera? Lord, pwede bang I'll follow you pag wala na ako masyadong iniisip? 
<laughs> Ang hirap ano, brothers and sisters. But I'll share to you. Here's the chart of of the stories that we've discussed. The here, the first one was the leper, the, the centurion servant, and the sick mother. Yun yung first three that we shared. And there was a follow me story. The, the one that followed was about the two who would be disciples. That the about the two who God invited, diba? And then the do na story in the story. We see then. The demonized men, then the paralyzed men. And brothers and sisters, meron na naman kasunod na follow me story, which is the call of Matthew. Ayan, si Matthew na yung tinawag ni Lord. So, may natitira pang tatlo. We will discuss that in the following weeks. Yung dead girl and the sick woman, the two blind men, and the mute man. Yun yung mga kasunod na. But today, we'll talk about the second follow me story, which was the call of to Matthew. Si Matthew na yung tinaw- tinawag. And which is also our key reading for today, for our talk. So here's the one big message that I want to share to you, brothers and sisters. Jesus wants you, yes, you, wants you in his team. Let's watch our main passage for this talk. As Jesus was walking along, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at his tax collector's booth. Follow me and be my disciple, Jesus said to him. So Matthew got up and followed him. Later, Matthew invited Jesus and his disciples to his home as dinner guests, along with many tax collectors and other disreputable sinners. But when the Pharisees saw this, They asked his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with such scum? When Jesus heard this, he said, Healthy people don't need a doctor. Sick people do. Then he added, Now go and learn the meaning of this scripture. I want you to show mercy, not offer sacrifices. For I have come to call not those who think They are righteous, but those who know they are sinners. Brothers, obviously, this story was very special for Matthew. Kasi tungkol sa kanya, this was his story of how Jesus changed his life forever. And alam naman natin how inspiring the story of Matthew is. I, I can only imagine how he was writing this life. Nakangiti siya na. Grabe, ito yung pinagdaanan ko. Grabe, ito yung, ito yung time na tinawag ako ni Lord that I did not know what to do but He was there. He called me and I felt how much He loves me. Sig- siguro ang sarap nung ganong feeling. Ano? But I think sharing this to us, He was also telling us na, alam nyo, I was also a bad boy. Hindi naman ako sobrang bait lang at kaya ako tinawag ni Lord. Walang iya din ako. I was a bad boy but Jesus made me part of his team. And invite niya ako sa team niya. He called me. And so, kaya sinasabi niya sa atin through this message is that, brothers and sisters, don't disqualify yourself. No matter what you're going through, don't disqualify yourself. If I made, if Matthew made it to his team, sinasabi niya sa atin, you can make it too. That's how important it is. And I want you to remember this because ju- just to learn, because Jesus wants you in his team. I want you to look in the mirror and talk to yourself and say, alam mo, Jesus wants you in his team. To end this this part, I want to share a story with you. There was a time na there was a scientific researcher who gathered 10 volunteers for a special psychological study called the SCAR experiment. Yes, yung sugat, yung peglat, the SCAR experiment. Separating the volunteers, uh, nilagay niya sila into 10 different cubicles with mirrors para kita lang sarila. And then she explained that the purpose of the study was to examine how other people would respond to a stranger with a physical deformity such as a facial scar. So, paano sila itatrato ng ibang tao? So, using makeup tricks straight out of Hollywood, the scientists put yung mga bloody, madugo, nakakatakot na mga scars on each volunteer's left cheek. So, sa left cheek nilagay. 
Hindi dito. <laughs> she showed each volunteer the new scarf. Pinakita niya sa salamayan with a small handheld mirror and then put the mirror away. Tinago na niya. So after the volunteer showed that, sabi ng researcher sa kanila, yung final step was to tell each volunteer that she needed to put some finishing powder on his or her scar to prevent it from smearing. Para hindi kumalat. So, in reality, nung pinupunasan, ay dito pala, pinupunasan niya yung left cheek, she was using a tissue to wipe off the scar. Tinatanggal niya lang yung dumila, hindi nila napapansin. And the volunteers, however, believed that they still had scars on their faces. And nandun pa, kasi yung nakita nila sa mirror earlier. So each volunteer was sent out into the waiting rooms of different medical offices with instructions na pansinin yung lahat ng dumadaan na strangers sa office and how did they respond to your scar? Ano bang sinabi nila? Anong reaction nila? And after the appointed time, all 10 volunteers returned with the same report. Anong report nila? Sabi nila, they noticed that strangers were more rude to them, less kind to them, and, sca- and, and scared to lie, and stared at their scar. Nakatingin lang, nakatitig sa kanila, tapos hindi, hindi maayos ang trato sa kanila. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, with that, sorry, ano ba yung gusto kong ishare na point sa inyo? I think, brothers and sisters, God calls us, even if we don't have credentials, there is no problem. God calls us. He created you and loved you as His child. When you take time to listen to God's voice telling you who you really are, I think you will be less likely to worry about what others think of you. Diba? Ganun ka yung puta natin. Si Lord yung bahala. When he, when he looks at you, He looks at you as His creation beautifully and wonderfully made. Yeah, so brothers and sisters, to continue our talk, let us welcome Brother Jay Yugawin. Thank you so much, Brother Anthony. Thank you so much. Hello, brothers and sisters. Brother Jay here. Ano, pupuntahan nyo ba yung ospital na sinabi ni Brother Anthony? Doon ba kayo magpapagaling? <laughs> well, I know that's an outrageous story, but it does give us the message that we'd like to tell you at this time. Keep that in mind as we continue our talk for the day. Brothers and sisters, let me bring you back to ancient Israel. And guess what? My hospital in Selenon. A spiritual hospital. And there was only one spiritual hospital during that time. And what is that? It is this. The Holy Temple in Jerusalem. Ah, ganda, di ba? Grabe, no? That's the Holy Temple in Jerusalem. And it's run by a set of priests known as Sadducees. Yeah, these are the Sadducees. Now, understand this though. The Sadducees, they were very rich. Very rich priests because they cooperated. No. Actually compromised with the Romans. Now, you might be saying, Brother Jay, what do you mean compromise? Understand, friends, that the Romans were enemies of the Israelites. But, of course, Rome conquered Israel and they had to cooperate with the Romans. So, just like in our time, we had to cooperate with the Spaniards or the Japanese. Now, understand that these Sadducees were doing this cooperation with Rome because they want to maintain their wealth, maintain their status. Because know that they were actually handling the monopoly, the business monopoly in the temple. Now, again, you might be saying, Brother Jay, what are you talking about? May business a temple? Yes, remember that in temple, people were going to go there to sacrifice animals, right? And they had to get the best animals, okay? Now, understand that in the temple, there's a marketplace. Who runs the market of these animals? The Sadducees. And they would, they would what? They would jack up the prices of all these animals. And so the, the temple was not serving many people. They were, they were not serving huge chunks of society. And who were they? These were the lepers, the Samaritans, prostitutes, those people who were considered uh, unclean and also those people who didn't have the money to pay these, uh, these priests. Now, of course, Jesus came in, looked at the situation, this horrible situation, and because of his love for his people, he, he came um, to announce the coming of his kingdom. And guess what? His, his kingdom would be like what? A spiritual hospital. All right? Okay? Now, friends, understand that um, 
what we talked about this this idea of this crazy hospital all right is similar to what jesus was trying to do okay why because jesus in his spiritual hospital did not hire the professional religious people the bible scholars the the pastors the priests no who did he hire he hired the uneducated fishermen right who did he hire he hired peter he hired james john andrew and if that was not enough he hired one of the most scandalous recruits possible all right and who was this this shady character known as matthew yeah because matthew was a tax collector all right let's read about the call of matthew in no less all right matthew chapter 9 verse 9 As Jesus was walking along, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at his tax collector's booth. Follow me and be my disciple, Jesus said to him. So Matthew got up and followed him. Oh my. Brothers and sisters, I don't know if you realize it, but that was earth-shaking. That was so scandalous, so controversial, all right? Now, um You might be saying, why, why, why? Well, before I answer that, let me ask you a question. If, let's say, you were in ancient Israel, who would you rather have as a neighbor? Sino yung gusto mong kapitbahay? Isang pariseo o isang tax collector? Would you rather have a Pharisee as a uh, neighbor or a tax collector? Wait, before you answer me, though, I need to explain um, these two characters, all right? So if You had a Pharisee as a neighbor. Sa totoo lang, brothers and sisters, okay. <laughs> Bakit? Kasi hindi ka maguguluhin yan. Bakit? Maayos sila. All right? They're law-abiding. They're church-going. They pray five times a day, mind you. Okay? Hindi naman sila maingan. Siguro mayroon ka lang pamitamin sa mga marinig kumakanta. Then sumasabay sa Spotify. Di ba? Y- y- yung ganon. Brothers and sisters, these people will not disturb you. There are no lo- loud parties. If ever they do have a party, they're just, they're just, what uh call people who are like them also co-pharisees all right co-priests who more or less of course are quiet people uh well-mannered people okay their parties are uneventful they are all pleasant do, do you get me now this is the pharisee okay however if you have a tax guy a tax man as a neighbor well get ready why because of this the tax collector was considered one of the worst sinners in Israel. Yes, brothers and sisters, ang tingin nila sa, uh, sa tax collector hindi talaga maganda. Well, in general, di ba, partic- maybe particularly in olden times, but even ngayon, di ba, may mga taong, in, they, they, they avoid the tax collector, right? They don't like to deal with the tax collector. Now, that's true in general, just because of the tax um, in the world. In ancient Israel, it's special. The tax collector, it's not just because that they collect the tax. No, it's much more than that. All right? Now, as, as early as now, I'd like to say, tax collecting right now, it's, it's, a, uh, what's it? it's a decent job. Okay? All right? It's a decent job. We're talking about the tax collecting in ancient Israel. All right? And because they're so much more connected to the tax collecting during that time. Jews tax collectors because of two main reasons. Very first reason is this. Many saw them as greedy, cheating bastards with no conscience. <laughs> Walang konsensya. Bakit? Kasi ito ang nangyayari. Ang setup kasi ganito. The, the tax collectors then were Jews, but they were hired by the Romans, the enemy, all right, to collect taxes. So yun pa lang, no? Yun pa lang. Galit na yung mga Israel. Pero ito ang mas grabe. All right? Hindi sinesweldohan itong mga tax collector. Tax collectors. They did not get any salary from Rome. How did they earn? They just earned out of whatever they can get from what? Get from their co-Jews. All right? Because they just had to pay a certain amount to Rome. Kung baga parang boundary. Kung ano ang ipapatong pa nila doon, sa kanila na yun. Do you get this? And so you can just imagine with this kind of arrangement, there could be so much abuse that can happen. Okay? Take note, they made a fortune out of their neighbor's misfortune. Yun yung ginawa ng mga tax collector. And so you can just imagine 
how the Jews thought of these people who were taking advantage of them. Second reason is this. Many saw them as traitors to their country, representing the surface government that the Romans installed. So, as I said a while ago, they were cooperating with the Romans, and they were therefore they were what? These tax collectors were in cahoots with the enemy, all right? And what? Uh, if you would have this tax collector as a neighbor, you will find a lot of enemies also entering their house. Roman soldiers will go in and out. And most likely, you will have situations when you're going to see a koju begging for mercy from their Jew, from your neighbor, who's also supposed to be a Jew, but who is now what, uh, enforcing Roman tax. Do you get this? Na uh, magmapakaawa pa yung kay kaibigan mo siguro, kakilala mo dito sa kapitbahay mo na tax collector. It's so sad, right? But also that, Understand, if he is your neighbor, you expect a noisy crowd. You will have parties, rowdy parties. You will find this tax collector probably drunk and cursing alongside with his guests who are also uncultured, just like him. Who are they? The prostitutes, the pagans, the, the idol worshippers. I tell you, it's going to be so noisy. And so, friends, I have that question for you. Back to you. Who do you want to be your next-door neighbor? The Pharisee or the tax collector, the tax man. Who? Well, most likely you're going to pick the Pharisee, right? <laughs> to have the same life, right? But guess what? Jesus, he picked the other guy. He picked the tax collector. And he picked Matthew. That was a jaw-dropping moment for so many people. They couldn't understand. Not just the Pharisees, I guess. Even for the other people who joined Jesus, I, I, I bet probably Matthew, uh, rather uh, Peter and, and James probably got surprised to have Matthew join them. How could Jesus recruit a tax collector to join his team to save the world? Right? But friends, take note of this. Can I preach to you? God wants to change the world. And he is, he, and he is what? Recruiting his team. He is forming his team. And guess what? Jesus wants you in his team. He wants you in his team. And everybody, you might be saying, Brother Jay, what are you talking about? Are you crazy? I'm unworthy. I'm ungifted. I'm unqualified. Okay? But brothers and sisters, despite what you said, Jesus is picking you. Yes? He's picking you anyway to be part of his team. Ako nga eh, hindi ko rin akalain na napasama po ako dito. And, uh, uh, well, I guess God saw something in me that I didn't see. He saw something in the different servants and leaders here in the light of Jesus. And not just in the light of Jesus, in, in so many movements, in so many organizations of what? Of, uh, of following Jesus. He saw something good that that can bless the world, even if we do not see that. Brothers and sisters, guess what? Even if you might say that you don't, uh, that you're not worthy, that you're not, you're not okay to serve the Lord, to, to bless other people also, guess what? Jesus is inviting you now to be part of his team. Now, let's go back to, to Matthew, though. Um, Matthew uh, was a tax collector. In that, it's already scandalous that Jesus recruited him. But you know, there's something much more outrageous that Jesus did. Let's all read about it. Later, Matthew invited Jesus and his disciples to his home as dinner guests, along with many tax collectors and other disreputable sinners. Oh my Friends, brothers and sisters, of course, Matthew had his barcada, had his crowd, okay? And the crowd that Matthew belonged to was not good in the eyes of the religious leaders. Religious leaders would distance themselves from these bad boys, would be condemning these people, all right? And even maybe praying that bad things happen to these people. Now, take note, the more controversial thing that Jesus did, he did not only recruit. Matthew, but 
he actually did the opposite of what the religious leaders were doing with these bad boys, the crowd of Matthew. Jesus went to them. Jesus befriended them. He laughed with them. He ate with them. He listened to them. He what? He dipped his pita bread in the hummus that they also dipped the, their, their, their pita in. If the religious leaders were criticizing these bad boys, the, the barcada of Matthew, Jesus did not. He actually, what, uh, uh, treated them as friends, as equals, as, as human beings, as image bear, bearers, as, as God carriers also. And so the reaction of what? Of the religious leaders was very swift and fast. What did they say? It's this. But when the Pharisees saw this, they asked his disciples, why does your teacher eat with such scum? Oh my, imagine to say that. But friends, when I read that, I realized, wait, how are we doing church today? Well, in a way, we're not, we're, we're quite different also from what Jesus did before. I have this question for you. When was the last time you were accused of hanging out with the wrong crowd? Yeah? Did you ever uh, have been asked that? Or maybe you yourself ask yourself, will I go with the worldly people? Will I stay with all of them? I myself was tempted with that question. Um, that, hey, is it okay for you to hang out with those people who are uh, of bad repute and all of this? But you know, the question that came to me was, wait, what's more important? Okay. Remember your mission. And remember why we do this. If we're called by Jesus, it's because Jesus, first of all, came to us. And then how about these people? They need people to share Jesus to them. And so I recall this verse from the Bible. Jesus said this, healthy people don't need a doctor. Sick people do. Well, you know, friends, I myself would tell you, I'm not totally healthy. I have so many weaknesses, so many sicknesses. Do you understand me when I'm not totally uh, say healthy and all? Because we also have our own weaknesses and differences. But that should not stop us from what? From, from believing in what God has given us and sharing Jesus to as many people. Because we don't know who are the people who need Jesus much more now that we already know Jesus. Friends, let me share with you a quote from St. Augustine. Uh, this is what they say. It's from St. Augustine. He said something brilliantly. The church is not a museum of saints, but a hospital for sinners. We're not in church because we're perfect, brothers and sisters. We're not in church because we're already healed and all okay already. All right? No, no, no. Um, we're actually a hospital for sinners. We're a hospital for sinners. It means to be in. We don't separate ourselves. We're actually there also for those people who need God's healing, who need God's love. Pope Francis himself said something similar. He said this. The church is a field hospital after the battle. A field hospital, brothers and sisters. Understand, di ba ang hospital, yung talagang hospital, the patients go to the hospital. But what did Pope Francis say? No, the church is like a field hospital. Ibig sabihin tayo, yung mga doktor, yung mga nurse, yung mga daladala ang gamot, tayo ang pupunta dun sa pasyente. Hindi yung pasyente pupunta sa atin. Tayo pupunta na. Pupunta. Kasi nga, hirap na sila. You go where they are. You go to the battle where they are. And that's where they can be they can be healed. They can be fed. They can be cared for. Brothers and sisters, that's what the Lord is calling us to. That despite, let's say, all our sickness also, all our difficulties, we go out also and be that Jesus to as many people. Guess what? Brothers and sisters, Jesus wants you in his team. Amen and amen. May God speak to you much more, brothers and sisters, through Brother Joel Saladares. Thank you so much, Brother Anthony and Jay, for preaching the message today. Again, friends, Jesus wants you in his team. I remember joining the Light of Jesus family when I was in college. Never did I expect that I will be serving full-time in ministry in this community today because I felt, especially at that time, and even some time up to now, that I was both unqualified and unworthy. But because of the love 
the acceptance, the feeling of being family, I was led to God and now serve Him in any way I can. Sad fact, sad truth. Many of our churches or prayer groups or religious organizations are big in purity but small in mercy. Because of this, these groups don't feel like a field hospital. They feel like a military camp. The message, if you've got what it takes, come and apply. If you're strong enough, disciplined enough, good enough, you just might be accepted. Do you know what I think? I believe God is, is heartbroken that his church is not the field hospital that he wants them to be. He's heartbroken because instead of embracing sinners, we exclude them. Our spiritual family, the light of Jesus' family, we, we, we call our weekly gatherings the feast. We, we try to pattern our feast with max party. The template of the feast is lack of max party. We want to replicate that radical celebration of God's mercy. We want a spiritual gathering where the worst sinners are welcome. The feast is not for holy people. It's not just for holy people, but for struggling people. When, when I joined the feast many years ago, I was struggling in my faith. I had no clear directions. I had no clear purpose in life. I was lost. But in the feast, I felt love. I was accepted. Jesus then gives us the history. As we continue to read the passage in verse 13, what did it say? Let me read it to you. Now go and learn the meaning of this scripture. I want to show mercy, not offer sacrifices, for I have come to call not those who think they are righteous, but those who know they are sinners. Jesus came. Not for the righteous, but for the sinners. Jesus was making it clear. He, he was not doing something new. This was not his invention. It, it happened before, long before already. The prophets, the psalmists, hundreds of years ago have been saying what Jesus was saying. Jesus even quoted directly from Hosea. When, when Hosea said, For I desire mercy, not sacrifice. If the prophet Hosea were here today, he'd be asking us, so okay, so you pray every day. Yes, so what? So what if you pray every day? So what if you go to church every day, every week, you fulfill your religious obligation? What use is all that if you don't show mercy to the broken, to the wounded, to the sinful? Let's continue reading. Verse 14, what does it say? One day, the disciples of John the Baptist came to Jesus and asked him, Why don't your disciples fast like we do and the Pharisees do? Very practical answer. They just came from Matt's party. If you're in a party, will you fast? <laughs> but, but Jesus gave them a deeper answer. To continue, do wedding guests mourn while celebrating with the groom? Of course not. But someday, the groom will be taken away from them and they will fast. We, we know that Jesus fasted 40 days, in fact, many times. We also know that at least some of his disciples fasted with him because he taught them. It, it was, it was well, we, we studied it four chapters before in the Sermon of the Mount. But, but why were they not fasting now? Jesus wanted to be very clear. The kingdom of God will be marked by celebration. Matt's party, the party that Matt you hosted, was like the homecoming party of the prodigal son. Something beautiful was happening in that party. And then here's what I've realized. The church that has no room for celebration will have no room for prodigal sons. Sadly, these churches, these groups like separating, not celebrating. This groups like condemning, not connecting. This is why we need an overhaul. We need a new wine. Here's the last part of the passage for today. Verse 16 to 17 says, Besides, who would patch old clothing with new cloth? For a new patch would shrink and rip away from the old cloth, 
living and even bigger tear than before. And no one puts new wine into old wine skins, for the old skins would burst from the pressure, spilling the wine and ruining the skins. New wine is stored in new skins so that both are preserved. Friends, do you need more joy in your life? Do you want more celebrations of mercy? That means your parties lack wine. I have an announcement to make. Jesus is the new wine. The Pharisees, the broken religion that excludes the broken people, were like the old wineskins that had to be thrown away. Even the disciples of John the Baptist, who were so focused on fasting but not celebrating, also had to change because there are so many Matthews out there who are searching for God. I've met many sincere people who were searching for God. But when they went to the church, to what did they found? They, they found stern-looking, serious-faced religious people who were focused on, on people's sin, who were focused on judging people. And, and in turn, what happened? They just left. Instead of love and acceptance, they felt judged. I remember a friend of mine who shared with me his story told me he was seeking for a deeper meaning for his life. And because he, he, was, he knew how to play the guitar, so, so he, he joined. He joined a, a community. He, he joined a religious group and, and used his skill, his talent in playing the guitar to, to be part of their music team. Uh, he said yes. He said yes to serving, hoping to find that he, what he was looking for. But he, when he went there, he never felt that people actually cared for him. Instead, he felt that he was always being looked at. He was always being judged. At best, he was a project. He, he was a project that was to be accomplished. He said that the first thing that the religious leaders asked him to do was to cut his hair, to change his look, to, to, to quit smoking, to stop his, 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 his strong words, his cursing. And when he compared, when he compared his church friends, with his secular friends, he, he felt that the latter were more caring, more accepting. Friends, you know what? This is a common story. It's a fact. The church has strayed away too much, too far from the template of Jesus, from the parties that Jesus held at his time. That is why here at the feast, we try to be like Matt's party. Friends, Jesus wants you to be in his team. Come, join him. The feast is like a tent with, with doors at the front and the rear. It's open for anyone. It's open for everyone. Everyone is accepted, righteous and sinners alike. You know what? There, there, something happened, this, this quarantine. I, I want to show you a, a picture of our feast life that is happening among jeepney drivers. One of, one of the jeepney drivers is leading this feast. And, and since the lockdown, they've lost their livelihood. And what did they do? They tried supporting each other. Meeting on the street, meeting in their shorts, in their sandals and slippers. And they found a spiritual home among each other. We, we also have many feast lights with, with, with OFWs, caregivers, domestic helpers all around the world. Some of them are illegal workers. Some of them have immoral out, uh, relationships, relationship out of marriage, living, living in with partners. And you know what? We embrace them. We accept them. And we don't try to change them. You know why? Only Jesus can do that. Jesus will change them because it was he who change us. This is the kind of party that Matt organized, that Jesus went to. You know what, today I want to end today's message by remembering and honoring a dear friend, a co-servant, we will fondly call him Tito June, who in his later years started a party like Matt's. I met him at the feast more than, I think more than two years ago. 
He attended the feast. And during that time, he was praying and telling the Lord, Lord, I have been serving you for a time already. I'm old already. I'm in my old age. Now it's time for me to retire. He was saying, okay na ako eh. Tapos na siya mag-serve kasi matanda naman na siya. He was past his senior, senior age year. He was already decided. But in his intimate moment with the Lord during that first time he attended the feast in Robinson's Galleria, in, in the worship, he, he, learned, he, he heard God spoke to him. The, the song says, I have decided to follow Jesus, no turning back. No turning back. That song spoke to Tito Jun. And he knew at that moment that God wanted him to do something else. That it was a holy disturbance from the Lord. Okay, may edad ka na. Okay, matanda ka na. Okay, baka hindi ka na kasing sigla at kasing lakas nung mas bata ka pa. Eh ano ngayon? Hindi ba buhay ka pa? That, that was the message that that day God spoke to him and asked him to start a feast light. You know what? Normally, normally a feast light, you will start it where, where you work or, or where you live, malapit sa bahay mo. But, but Tito Jun had a different calling. He had a different vision. He started a feast light in Inarawan Antipolo. He lives in Quezon City. He started a feast light in Inarawan Antipolo. He was helping. At that time, he was helping a group of about a thousand families with, with their housing project. Tito Jun was connected with, with a, a housing project. He had a dream. He had a vision. He wanted to bring Jesus. He wanted to bring a party like that of Matt in that community that they were about to build. So he, tar- he started Feast Light in Arawan. Every week, together with some of our Feast Ortigas angels, we call them, they, they were a group of four, five senior citizens who after the feast, at about we end the feast at 3, 4 p.m., after that they would travel an hour ride, commute, going to Antipolo from Ortigas to help organize the feast light there. And for more than two years he was doing, Tito June was doing that weekly started the feast light with a core of about 20 leaders of the homeowners association of, of, of the, the, the housing project that they were building. His vision is to establish a feast in their soon-to-be community, right at the very heart of their housing project. Many times he shared with me that it is not just enough to provide people with houses and income opportunities. For him, it is important to nourish their spirit and nourish their soul. He conducted regular LSS, values formation, seminars and programs for, for, for the would-be residents of the community. We would do a, a weekly light, feast light session in that. And sometimes in their general, they have a monthly general assembly attended by a thousand representatives of the families who would be part of the community. We would have a a live feast there from time to time. At his old age, Tito Jun allowed Jesus to use him. Earth's loss, but heaven's gain. Last August, Jesus asked Tito Jun to finally retire from his service here on earth. But you know what? I believe Tito June is now still hosting and celebrating parties up in heaven. And the seed that he had planted continues to grow. I am sure one day his vision will come to life. He started and planted something already for that community. Friends, Jesus wants you to be part of his team. Look not your age, your situation, your inequities, your limitations stop you from saying yes to his invitation. Are you ready to join in Matt's special parties? Invite your family, your friends to join you here in our feast. Share the video in your timeline. Tag your friends. Start a watch party in your Facebook walls. The same way that you are blessed, share the good news about Jesus? Or is God calling you to start your own parties like that of Matthew? You can do 
you can build one too. I urge you, look for three to five people. You can have a feast like in your homes, in your office, or via Zoom. Each week, do real church together. Do life together. Three steps. First, watch the talk portion of the feast. Second, swap stories, share stories, and lastly, pray for each other. That's it. You've already started a party like Matt's party. Friends, again, this is my question that I would want to leave to you. Are you ready to be part of Team Jesus? Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, thank you for giving us this ability to see you, ability to know you, ability to hear you, Father God. You know what's in our hearts. These dreams that you planted is no accident. Father, on the darkest times that we think that we are unworthy of your love, that we think that we are too weak, vulnerable, fragile, to even chase on your love. I know that you will prove us otherwise, because every day you prepare for us the same kind of love that you had when you made us in your likeness, in your image. Father, we ask right now that you heal us whatever form it may be it may be physical, mental, spiritual. Lord, embrace us right now as we praise you, as we worship you, together as one community. So with open arms I sing, now I let my walls come down, let your presence fill me now. I receive your love, by your grace I have been saved. I receive this life, by your cross I've been set free. You are
Thank you, thank you so much to our worship team for, for leading us into that powerful reflection of the message. Truly, truly, God's invitation is, is out there. Now the question, the decision lies on us. Are we ready to be part of Team Jesus? Friends, thank you for joining us for another episode of our Feast at Home. And I hope that you have been blessed. I hope that God spoke to your heart amidst, amidst, amidst your, the feeling of inadequacy, the, amidst the feeling of unworthiness. Know that, that God came. Jesus came for us, the unworthy, the inadequate. Jesus doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies the call. Also, I would like to thank you for, for your generosity. I would like to continue to encourage you to, to continue the acts of generosity by supporting our ministry. You may continue to give your, your tithes and offering as we show them to you in, in, in the screen. You may visit our website, feastortigasdistrict.com slash give, or also you may you may give your donations through the bank accounts that we are showing to you right now. Again, friends, thank you so much. It, it was a joy. It was a pleasure to be with you, to, to, to listen to the message of the Lord together with you. And let us continue. Let us continue the cycle of, of God's goodness. How? Wag lang sa atin. Let's continue to share. Let's continue to to, to invite others to be part of our feast, our feast at home. And together, let's grow in the love and in the service of the Lord. God bless you, everyone. Enjoy your week. And I'll see you again next time.